So undoubtedly a principle rule of thumb with the quality is if it's bright and colorful, it's probably beneficial to your body and that's on a cellular level for sure. No one has ever said, wow, I've got vegetable poisoning. Yeah, I don't think I've heard that. Never, never heard that. Yeah. Good afternoon, friends. PC and Dylan Foss here at Gravity and Oxygen Fitness coming to you with another edition of Turf Talk Tuesday. That's right, a special one as we begin to discuss our September program called No Bull. 30 days of? No added sugar. No added sugars. No alcohol. No alcohol. And? No processed foods. There you go. Absolutely. Sounds like a tough task. Sounds like no fun. <laughs> but we promise you it will be worth it in the value if you, get, uh, if you participate with us. So talking about that, we not only get into the specifics of food, but we talk about the principles. And we have four primal principles of nutrition in this 30-day challenge. Preach, sir. All right. So first, you have the quality of the food that you're taking in. That is your foundation. That is your building blocks for everything else that you do in terms of nutrition and lifestyle around any dietary choice. So the quality of the food. Second, you have the quantity of the food. How much of each food are you taking in? Oh, portion, portion, okay. portion control. Okay. And then how many of each color maybe may you getting in, right? So all these different things that come into play. Then you have your timing, timing. right? So what time of day are you eating? How close to your workout before or after? How close to bedtime or how early when you wake up? All those things play a factor. And then even your last thing, what you may not be getting from everything else when you need support, right? Supplementation, mm -hmm. those sorts of add-ons that we find gaps and we look to fill them in. So they are supplemental to quantity. Not replacement. Quality, yes, exactly. To your quality, quantity, and timing of real whole foods. And that's what we want to tackle in Noble. Great. So let's briefly tackle each of those principles, bud. Um, yep. So we've always heard you are what you eat, yep. right? And if we are a thermodynamic machine, a car, what kind of fuel are we putting in that car? True. So quality is about what you're putting in and benefiting on a cellular level. So give me a brief synapse of these beautiful, colorful foods that we have in regards to fruits and vegetables in that quality format. Cool, so uh, each color of a fruit or a vegetable has to do with basically the nutrients that it has within it, right? So uh, they're actually called phytonutrients. They are part of that certain uh, vegetable, that certain plant's immune system. And as a result of eating it, you can help, uh, you your body breaks that down and uses that for its immune system mm -hmm. as well. So. Sure. Something that is blue or purple, like your berries, right? Or maybe eggplant. Right. Uh, those sorts of things are going to have bioflavonoids in them. So big, yeah, big fancy word. Uh, those things are going to be beneficial from an antioxidant standpoint. Right. right. Dark berries, antioxidants. Remember yeah, that. There you go. Next. So reds. Reds are very similar and kind of overlapping with your uh, with your orange. So you have maybe uh, strawberries. Uh, maybe you have raspberries, tomatoes, tomatoes right? Um, mm -hmm. All different fruits and vegetables. You have pumpkins and peppers and oranges and clementines and carrots. Those are going to be heavy in carotenoids, all right? So carotenoids are great for blood flow, great for the heart, great for our overall your, your blood system. Right? Correct. So uh, then you can move into yellows and greens, and a lot of those you'll overlap. We have a yellow pepper with a green stem. We have yellow corn with green surrounding that, right? Lemons. Often, often you'll find that pep, uh, lemons and bananas are green before they turn yellow, right? Before they become ripe. Correct. So these things are very, very, very dense uh, with especially chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is great for detoxing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great for detoxing. Uh, it's great on the aspect of overall immune health. And they're also very dense from a filling standpoint. So satiation is huge with, with green and yellow vegetables. Which helps your quantity and your portion exactly. control. Exactly. So undoubtedly, a principal rule of thumb with the quality is if it's bright and colorful, it's probably beneficial to your body. And that's on a cellular level for sure. No one has ever said, wow, I've got vegetable poisoning. Yeah, I don't think I've heard that. Never, never heard that. Yeah. Exactly. So talk to me about... Uh, quantity. We talk about calories in and calories out on a macro level, right? Yeah, and so on a macro level, right? Uh, if you drive more than you put gas in, you run out of fuel. 
easy peasy, your car stops right in the middle of the road. We don't want that to happen. So what we're looking to do is basically control and meet the minimal standard for what your body needs from a basal metabolic rate. Correct. And then also adding in any sort of activity. So when you do an in-body, you'll find out basal metabolic rate, but then adding in activity, your workouts here, your activities of daily living, stressful job, a stressful job where you might be sitting all day, but mentally stressed, or a physical job where you might just be working and not so mentally stressed, but actually enduring a lot of uh, physical activity. So, so right. those go both ways. Right, so we're doing some simple math. Let's say my basal metabolic rate is um, 1,800 calories a day. Factor in a good workout, where it's another 600, and then activities of life, picking up my children, working with clients, another 250 to 300. Yeah. So if I'm at 1,800 plus 600, 24, plus another three, I might be burning 2,700 calories on a daily basis. Now, my goal is to get around that ratio and not go to 3,500, because then I'll be eating more than I'm expending, and over time, there's your weight gain. Yeah. So, but also, conversely, if you eat too minimal, then you're getting sub-basal metabolic rate, which is what we don't want. We don't want an empty gas tank. Yes. So, factoring that macro in the quantity level is crucial. Yeah. Timing, clutch, talking about timing principle. Yeah, timing. I mean, obviously, uh, certain foods are better at certain times of day, so that plays a factor. Uh, but then you also want to just get into the idea of not going maybe six hours in the middle of your workday without eating. That can cause huge fluctuations in energy. That can huge, uh, huge fluctuations in hormonal balance, which can cause the next meal to maybe get stored more as fat right. than as right. some sort of immediately used uh, muscle synthesis. Right? Blood sugar spikes, insulin issues, right? Yep. Correct. Yep. So frequency is a big factor, sub-factor of that timing. Definitely thinking about how you want to also fuel your workout. So getting a little bit of carbohydrates and proteins before the workout and then shuttle that with some amino acids during and then certainly replenishing what you've lost and expended post-workout. Exactly. Yeah. You hear people say, oh, I'm not supposed to eat after 9 p.m. Your body doesn't know 9 p.m. It just knows ebbs and flows of energy usage. So thinking about if you're tapering down your energy usage a few hours before you go to bed, then maybe you should be tapering down your caloric intake as well. Valid, yeah. it's, it's simple, simple principles. Yep. Supplementation, uh, give me the rundown on that. Supplementation and support. All right, these all have vitamins and minerals inside of them. That's what makes them powerful. But what if you took away it? You're not eating three uh, of the colors. Uh oh, oh my goodness. If you're not eating those colors, what do you do? You simply take vitamins and minerals that are going to support those certain things. So there's a big ecosystem of food out there. And there's that includes the way you cook foods, right? So maybe you do not ferment foods, maybe you don't pickle any foods. There's a perfect example of why you should maybe take digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, the preparation of the foods in that way allows your body to create more enzymes to help break down the food and get the nutrients and extract them into your body. So digestive enzymes are a supplement that a lot of people take because how many people do you know that often pickle their veggies and ferment their foods nowadays eight days a week not yeah <laughs> so it's just not common practice in day-to-day -day life anymore we're busy doing all sorts of other things and coming up with excuses so digestive enzymes is a great way to support a healthy diet and help you break down those veggies that you are taking a lot in them. Right. Perhaps something, uh, maybe you're not getting uh, enough uh, seafood or fish, so yeah. you might be void of omega-3s. There you go. When it comes to, um, you know, uh, antioxidant levels and inflammation, right? So there are things that if you're missing the potholes in your daily diet, then supplementation would be crucial in that, but yeah. only if you are missing those potholes. Yeah. So in regards to some of this amazing coaching that Dylan's doing, we will further this education as part of our month-long program, starting September 11th, the No Bull Challenge. It's a 30-day commitment to, once again, no sugar, no added sugars, no, no alcohol, alcohol, no processed foods, and really emphasizing the quality and quantity of your meal programs. If you are a non-member, you are invited to get unlimited classes involved with that. Yeah. We certainly encourage you to find out more information. You can click on the link that we'll be providing on this post as well. And um, we look forward to uh, opening our doors to both members and non-members alike. Mm -hmm. Any last points like you mentioned? Yeah, I think uh, a big point is that you don't necessarily have to be local. I think someone could be could potentially do this without being local to Boca Raton. That's a valid point because we are having a private Facebook page strictly for people who are involved in the Noble program. So you can even take photos. We'll have bonus system, a point system, mm -hmm. and how you can uh, achieve points by posting photos of your healthy meals and really getting involved. You can log on your own. So this could be uh, much more broad than just our local Boca Raton area. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think it 
it's just valid that, uh, you know, it's good to find community and accountability in anything that you do related to health and wellness and lifestyle uh, because it's much easier to do it with people. We are social beings. Right. So it's easier. Team support. Exactly. It's easier to have uh, that support of the village as opposed to trying to do it on your own. And then also being able to get feedback, live feedback from us here at Gravity and Oxygen, being able to taper some things, say more of this, less of that, and that's perfect. Don't change a thing. And that's reassuring. So I think uh, all those things considered, it's a great reason to, to hop into the 30-day no bull challenge with us. I'm excited for it to start. Equally am as well. We've, uh, we've run this multiple years and uh, we've had a lot of success with it. And once again, just another part of our added value here at Gravity and Oxygen, more than just a fitness gym, we try to provide all aspects of your overall wellness. And we hope to see you next week on our next Turf Talk Tuesday, which is going to be a special one. Yeah. How members define Gravity and Oxygen, what they think about us, and uh, hear their opinions and their feedback. So once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next edition of T3. Once again, Noble Challenge, September 11th. Click on the link below. We will see you soon. Good energy always wins. Ciao.